Okay, next in this section, we're going to talk about some special limits. And these are special limits that are involving trig functions. There's two main ones that we're going to look at. These kind of come up more often, and so that's why the book kind of highlights these specialized limits. The first one is this one. Theta goes to zero, sine theta over theta equals one. Where do we get that special limit from? From a graph. If you look at a graph and you look at theta going to zero from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you'll find that the y value is going to be approaching one from both sides. You could also show that by tables, by testing numbers that are very, very close to zero from both sides. That will also confirm that the limit's going to be approaching one. So this is the main special limit. These other two are kind of like using properties that are based off of the original one. So for this, if you have powers on top of each one, as long as the power on top matches the power on the bottom, that's going to go to 1 also. So primarily, whatever you have inside the sign, that's going to be exactly the same on the bottom. As long as it is, it's going to go to 1. So both of these are basically using the same principle as the first one. This one here is saying that if we have some kind of constant in front of theta, top and bottom, that's going to go to 1 also. In fact, this is the type of property that we're going to use on this example. Now, unfortunately, the numbers do not match, so I can't just automatically put 1 for the answer. I have to do something algebraically to this one in order to end up getting something that looks like this. So somehow I have to create a sine of 8 theta over 8 theta. The way that we can do this is we're going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over 8 theta. Now why are we choosing 8 theta? That's because we want to end up, when I multiply these, I want to create this over here and again, this is a result, 8 theta and 8 theta have to match, and then that way I can apply this principle uh, and know that that's going to go to 1. So I do that for top and bottom purposely. I'm, I'm picking the whatever thing is inside the sign, that's what I'm using for top and bottom. So here's what it looks like once you multiply that. You're going to create uh, a double fraction in this case, and so when you do that on top, you're going to have sine of 8 theta over 8 theta, on the bottom, the thetas are going to cancel out and you're going to end up with 5 over 8. So to see what would happen when we multiply top and bottom, we end up creating these two separate fractions. This one now forms a property that we're going to look at that's again based on the same principle as this one. It's going to be going to 1. But before we do that, we want to try and isolate this and get it by itself. So I want to get rid of this fraction that's down here by multiplying by the uh, reciprocal. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, what will happen is I can write this as 8 fifths, top fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom one, and it gets sine of 8 theta over 8 theta. Next, limit properties tells us that we can pull the 8 fifths out in front, so then we have limit as theta goes to 0 of sine 8 theta over 8 theta. Now this part right here, this whole part, is going to be equal to 1 because of this property there. So what happens is you have 8 fifths times 1, which means that your final answer is going to be uh, 8 fifths. So the limit as theta goes to 0, the original problem was sine 8 theta over 5 theta, final answer should be 8 fifths.